Welcome back everybody. Today I'll be leveling my blue mage to see if it is in fact the ultimate gill farming job. In this video I'll go over my solo leveling tips and go over all the spells needed and where to find them. I'll also show you some alternative strats I utilized to replace some of the harder spells. Finally I'll show my run through and explain how many people swear by it being so good and I'll give my thoughts on it versus utilizing it with other farms daily. So the first thing I need to do is grind to 80. The fastest way to do this is to find a friend and have them kill the mobs after you tag them. But I'm going to go over how to quickly get to level 80 without any friends. Er, I mean solo. I'm also not going to upgrade my gear throughout the leveling process and I'm just worried about getting 530 gear at level 80. First, levels 1 through 22. You want to just grind mobs about 5 levels higher than you just spamming water cannon. Your chocobo will help a lot. I also make sure I keep a food buff always up. I'm just using my leftover stakes from leveling my warrior. If you're in an FC, try to get them to use the XP buff to save more time. Turn on YouTube and hopefully your fingers can handle the button mashing for this grind. Once you're level 22, you want to head to Southern Thanalan. We're looking for seven tender Baylors. They cast a spell we can learn called Thousand Needles. This spell will do a thousand damage spread out to all the mobs within range of you, causing most mobs to be one-shotted. Wait for the Sabotender to cast a spell and then kill him. Once you learn the spell, add it to your castable spells and start one-shotting mobs. Continue grinding this way until you hit 30. Once you are level 30, head to Costa del Sol in Eastern Lesnosha and find an app Kalu. You'll be learning the spell Flying Sardine. This spell doesn't have a cast bar, so wait until you see them fling a fish at you and then kill him. Add that to your spell bar. Now I'm going to show you a way to cheese the leveling process from here till 80. I made the mistake of doing this the right way and continued leveling the slow way for a while. Don't be like me. This cheese requires you to have finished Shadowbringers because we'll be heading to the Ondo Cups in the Tempest. Once you're here, make sure you make this ether your home port because you'll be dying a lot and this will save you a lot of time and gil. Once you finish that, head north until you find these strange rainbow colored bees called clionids and deep sea leeches on the ground. The clionids will naturally eat the leeches. What you want to do is throw a flying fish at the leech and then get the clionids attention. If everything works properly, hopefully the clionid will eat the leech. Since you tag the leech, you receive full experience for killing it, roughly 140,000 each time. Though you will die if anything touches you. But if you set Ondo Cups as your home, you just res and repeat this process all the way to 80. This will be much faster than slowly grinding levels. It will only take a few hours versus an entire day of grinding. Once you're 80, the real fun can begin. It's now time to farm some spells to make the farms work. It's a lot of farms. I'm starting with Ifrit. I'm just doing the level 20 dungeon unsync to be the quickest. I'm trying for Eruption, the spell that makes the ground erupt. Go. I'll start by pulling Ifrit with a water cannon to get his... Uh, oops, can't do that. All right. This time, I'll use Thousand Needles to lower his health down. Wait for him to cast Eruption. Kill him. Rinse him pee until you learn the spell. Some people swear that the higher difficulties have a higher chance to learn the spell, but there's no actual proof for this. So I'm just going with this because it is the quickest prayer attempt. Though you can also do these synced and get them 100% of the time. And you don't need to always go with just blue mages. You could be the only blue mage in there and you'll get them 100% of your unsync. But if you're doing it solo and unsynced, it'll take a while. I finally learned Eruption. Now I'm going to get Shock Strike from Ramu. Easiest difficulty, unsynced again. It's funny, as a kid, before I heard anyone pronounce his name, I called him Rama, because that's how it's phonetically spelled. It's still hard to pronounce it right. You know, I still don't know how to properly do this fight. Oh well, I'll just kill him until I learn to spell. Next, I'll head to Alda to learn some spells from Wayward Gahil Ja. These spells will help me get some of the harder spells later. Now I head to Upper Lenosha to learn Basic Instinct from a Master Coral. After that, I head to Feral Sirius Hard Unsynced to learn Ethereal Mimicry. It's off the first boss. Wait for the ads to spawn 
and then just stand on top of a bird or spider to get them to tether and killed until you learn a spell. Then either kill the boss or die and leave. Then we are heading to Tam Terra Deepcraft Normal Unsynced to learn Mind Blast off the last boss. This is a 100% drop right since it's part of the Blue Mage story quest chain. After that, we'll head to Cutler's Cry Unsynced. We can learn Blood Drain from Sandbats, Self Destruct from Shrapnel, but we're mostly interested in getting Ram's voice off the last boss. Those self-destruct will play a pivotal part in our final spell setup. Now we'll head to the peaks and learn the spell Alter Vibration off of a Congo Matao. After I got that spell, I switched over to my warrior because I needed to kill the first seven bosses in the Alexander raid. This is because I need J kick off the eighth boss. All the information I found on soloing this as a blue mage was showing it kind of difficult, but I decided to wing it with half the recommended spells. And I got J kick on my first try. It was actually rather simple. I even went in as DPS back instead of healing. <laughs> I did not have as much success trying to solo Suzaku in Hell's Cure, though. She kicked my butt. I realized she would take more work than I was willing to spend on it right now, so I went looking for an alternative. Enter Thakas Thuck Hard Unsynced. He teaches me Serpanaka, which is four insta cast cone spells, which is a perfect replacement. He doesn't cast a spell until the second phase, so I got him low and then waited until he cast it on me and insta killed him. Repeat it until I learn the spell, like always. For my strat, I needed an additional defense buff or evasion, so I headed north of the Waking Sands in Western Thunderland to get total oil of a giggling Gigantotoads. Not the Laughing Toads. It can only be learned from the Giggling Toads. It has no cast bar, so just wait until they receive a buff and kill them. I head back to Alda and learn Mighty Guard from Wayward Gahil Ja. This spell becomes available once you have learned 10 spells. I'm now ready to do the famous Blue Mage Grind. If you're not aware of this farm, you will enter the vault with an unrestricted party, but have level sync checked. The plan is to kill all the trash up to the first boss because they will still drop gill. It takes less than a minute to complete a run, and you can do the run up to 100 times a day before Square Enix locks you out of dungeons for the rest of the day. So you can earn roughly 500,000 gill in less than two hours. So the hardest part about this run for me is remember to cast Basic Instinct each time I enter the dungeon. I'm going to go through this dungeon slowly in order to make it easier for you to see. First, cast Basic Instinct. Run up and cast Jade Kick on Vault Austeri. Next, I cast Ram's Voice to freeze them all in place. Followed up with an eruption. I take a step back in order to ensure everyone will be hit by Serpanaka. I spam all four in order to kill them all. I now run down the corridor and hug the corner. I do not sprint. I'll be saving that for later. Run up to Vault Auditor because he's a caster. I cast Ram's Voice to freeze everyone. Then I cast Swift Cast into Ultra Vibration to insta-kill them all. I run up to just before the door. I cast Toad Oil to increase my evasion. I was casting Bristle to increase my next spell's potency, but it's unneeded. I then cast Sprint and run past all the mobs through the corridor. I cast Eruption on the three mobs to pull them toward me. I stand in the little wedge, wait half a second for the mobs to reach me, and cast Self-Destruct, killing all the remaining mobs. Leave the instance, wash, rinse, and repeat as many times as you want, up to 100 times a day. A drawback of this method is sometimes the Vault Deacon will get stuck on the corner and not reach you before you self-destruct. This happened about 10 times in my 100 attempts. You'll average about 5,500 gil per run, and after 100 runs, you'll have roughly 550,000 gil for two hours of grind. On paper, this is a great opportunity to easily make gil in a short amount of time. You don't need to deal with the market board and people always undercutting you. It only takes two hours to complete. So if you only have a short amount of time to play in a day, this is a perfect farm. Though if you have all day, I would strongly recommend doing other things with your time to make gill. And then towards the end of your day, finish off with some fault runs to pad out your wallet. 
because I can make a lot more gill a day farming deep dungeons or varied dungeons than locking myself out after 100 vault runs. Will I add this to my daily grind? You bet I will. But it will be towards the end of the, my day after I know I won't be online much longer and just finish out as much as I can. Having a max level blue mage also unlocks faster level 80 fate farms and I can clear zone of skin maps almost instantly. I don't know how well blue mages do inside the portals. I'll have to wait for another day to test that out. Plus, I would like to get a few more powerful spells before I try, especially the newer level 80 spells. Well, I hope you liked following me along as I level my blue mage and made my spell book ready for the vault. A huge shout out to Oryx Guide to Blue Spells. They helped me tremendously with finding where all the spells I needed were located. I'll leave a link in the description. Go check them out. So let me know what you think and let me know if you have any more Blue Mage advice. Consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.